Hey guys, Jedi, Emma, James, hello. Welcome you guys. Hey Madison. Hello, hello. Happy Monday, you guys. All right. We're going to give it a minute to let everybody get a chance to hop on. Welcome. Hello, v Vienny. Hello, Bobby. Hello. Welcome, welcome, you guys. Hey, Marissa. Hey, Gina. Happy Monday. So good to see you guys here. I hope you've been having a good Monday. All right. So I think we're just about set. Hey, Kitty. Melissa, hello. Kim. All right. Welcome, you guys. So welcome to Mixed Media Monday, the live stream we get together every Monday and create a mixed media masterpiece. My name is Brianna, but you can also find me uh, at Dread Pirate Bree here on Instagram. So over the next several weeks, we're going to be going like Mixed Media Monday is being um, featured with Marabou products here. So we're going to be showing you different mixed media illustrations and dem demonstrations and whatnot using all Marabou products. So I've got a wide range of supplies here today, and I'm going to go over them in just a minute. I want to say a big thank you to our sponsors at Marabou, Marabou Creative USA. They are the ones who are, they are the creators of all these beautiful products and they're amazing. Um, you guys have heard me say it before and I will continue to say it. I have yet to find a Marabou product that I don't love. So it's super, super inspiring, super great. I feel like if you've been following the series so far, I feel like they're laced with magic because I feel like my art has just been growing in color and depth and everything. And it's been because of Marabou products. So thank you, Marabou. Uh, definitely go give them a follow, you guys. They are super inspirational and the things they post, there's just so eye-catching with color, very inspirational. I love it. So definitely give them a follow. So big thank you to Marabou for supporting Art Snacks and sponsoring this live stream. All right. So let's go into our products here. So we, I'm going to open it up with the alcohol markers. These are the Marabou Sketch markers. Now, if this is your first time here, you can actually shop all these products I'm using today in the Art Snack Shop because they're finally stocked. So yes, Art Snack Shop is finally stocked with all the Marabou line. So it's super exciting and you can head over there and get some nice fresh supplies. And I'm going to show you how to use four different types today in the same the same um, illustration. So, uh, or in, rather in a couple of them, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so these ones right here are the Marabou Sketch graphics markers. And that what that basically means is that these are alcohol-based markers. So I've got a scratch piece of Bristol paper here that I'm gonna use to just swatch out some things. You can see it's, well, there's no paper that goes to waste in my studio. All right, so I'm gonna actually take this beautiful green color. Now these markers are beautiful because they have a beautiful chisel nib. Yes, I have been learning how to use a chisel nib because of Marabou. Um, I've actually been sketching with them. It has been super inspiring because it's just a big chunky nib and I'm actually, I'm developing a huge respect for chisel nib. It's been super great. And then they also have a nice fine tip um, nib so you can get some finer details. You can fill in smaller areas or patterns and it's beautiful. Now the beautiful thing about alcohol markers is that they don't move with other mediums. They're permanent when dry. They're even like practically permanent when you lay them down, but you can do blending options with them. So this particular set right here, I've actually got, I'm pulling from two different sets. So all the colors you see here are from the heat set. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, heat. So it's this vibrant, I thought they were gonna be neon and I'm kind of glad they aren't. Um, they're just really vibrant colors and we're gonna go through all of them as we're making stuff, but I wanna get through this part first. So I'm gonna be pulling from there and I'm also gonna be pulling one marker from the Alpha Robot set, which is basically their grayscale set. I have been using these so much because these were featured in an Art Snacks box a few months back. And I'm gonna be pulling the light cool toned gray 
uh, for a blending purpose. So we have that option. So if you wanted to check that out, you can pick these up in the Art Snack Shop and they are pinned in this stream. Next up, I'm going to be working also with the Marabout Fine Liner Color Graphics. Now these are fine liner pens and they have a whole set of, I think, 24, yeah, 24 of them. They come in this beautiful box. It looks like that. You get this beautiful little chameleon guy on there. He's great. I love him. Um, and you can get the entire collection of 24. And that's all the colors. So I'm just going to bring out one. These are water-based fine liners. They're very similar to the aqua pens, like the brush markers, um, in that they are aqua based, but they're, they're much, you know, they're a fine liner. So you can get all the nice, beautiful line work. Now I have been super into, look at how, look at that color and how it spreads. Ah, it's so nice. It's just like a nice way to soften your details a little bit, both with colored fine liners, as well as spreading it out with water. It creates a super nice, um, a super nice soft look to it. So these are just a couple of the colors, but I've got more colors off to the side here that don't fit in my screen. So I'm gonna set those aside for now. We're gonna be bringing back the Marabou Art Crayons. These are basically like wax pastels, but they are water soluble. So they are a wax twistable crayon and you lay them down like so. They're super creamy and smooth. It's actually like, I could, I wish I could just like fill an entire space. I would use the entire crayon by filling up an entire canvas like that, but it's okay. So what you can do here is you can either smudge it with your finger and you get a beautiful range of value there and just like a nice soft smoky look to it. Or you can simply add water with a paintbrush and you can spread it out like so. And it's got this beautiful watercolor effect. And from there you can kind of like pick up a little bit more texture and you can even carry it out and like, look at it, look at just how far it stretches. It's amazing. I love it. And then last but not least, oh, and they do have all of these colors available in the Art Snack Shop. I think they even have a couple of the sets. Like you can actually buy a color tone set, like of four or three or something like that. So be sure to check it out. It's super nice. I've had, I've been a huge fan of these for years. <laughs> so I love them. Um, and then we've also got the Marabou Mixed Media Sprays. Now I have a variety of colors with me today. And these are nice. These are liquid acrylics. You, oh, it's so satisfying whenever you shake it to get it going. And it's just a simple spray on your paper. Now, if you want a more gradient, less concentrated kind of spray, you pull, you pull the nozzle back farther and spray further, further away from your paper. But if you want a more concentrated, like very heavy puddle, like look at that, look at that. Oh, so nice. Love it. And it gets so messy. You can just get it all over your hands. It's great. I love it. They're great for adding textures, layer, and backgrounds. They are permanent when dry. So keep that in mind whenever you're creating. All right, so those are all of our supplies. Let's go ahead and get into what we're actually going to be creating today. So as I was going through the prompts or the, the ideas of what to create, I got to thinking... You know, I have so many colors and so many different options and I want to create so much texture, but what am I going to put it in? Well, one of my go-tos when I don't know what to do is I put it in a jar. So one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to up my jar game a little bit by making, again, making my own stencils, but I created these various shapes that I think I'm going to turn into jars. And I was thinking, why not add different elements to it? So I have a bunch of these different shapes here. I think we're just gonna, we're just gonna start with um, one or two and we're gonna see how far we go. Maybe we'll even have time to make a third. So I'm gonna take this here. I love this so much. Um, it's this very like weird, weird kind of like abstract shape. So I thought about adding different elements to the jars because then I can actually focus on my different colors and be building my layers and trying to get certain effects. So this one, when I thought, when I saw it, I automatically thought of fire. So I felt, thought, why not? Now, if you are going to be, we're going to be using the spray, acrylic spray. I like to keep these um, scratch pieces of paper around and I like to lay them down. I'm not too worried about my tabletop getting messed up, but I do like to keep it a little bit controlled. So we're just going to go ahead and sanction off our areas here. And what we're going to do, and this is why we're actually going to be doing a couple of them, is because we want to make sure that we have enough dry time. And if you don't hear that little clanking, sometimes it just gets stuck at the bottom there. Shake it up real good. And we're just going to go ahead and just right there. All right. So we have one color down and I love to use 
different colors. Like I love to mix up the colors that complement each other. Because if you add blue with the yellow, it's going to get a green, which is not bad. But if we're going for fire, we want something a little more bold. So let's go. Maha. Maha. Now, sometimes the nozzles can get a little, and this is not just, you know, unique to this. This is for like any nozzles. Um, sometimes they can get a little bit um, backed up. So you want to store these upright. I would highly suggest again, storing them sideways. We've got this nice watermelon color. I love this watermelon color. It's one of my favorites. All right. Now we have this and I mean, it looks really busy. It, like it doesn't look as busy as what's around it, so, but I, it's not enough for me. I actually want to create some motion to it. So I've got a piece of bubble wrap here. I was having a lot of fun with this earlier today. And I'm just going to take it while it's still wet and you're just going to swipe it across. And we're going to have some range of motion there. So now it's time for the big reveal. Ah, we're just going to take away all these lovely side things. We're going to take this off and look at that. We got a beautiful shape of just texture, just like a light color. And now I always suggest starting lighter and moving darker because you can always make things darker. You can't always make things lighter. All right. So we've got that. We're going to go ahead. We're going to make a couple more. We'll make like one more for now, and then we're going to move on. Uh, and we'll come back to that in just a second. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time I think we're going to do some air. Now I think I was, I thought for sure the teardrop that I was going to do was going to be water. But I actually decided let's do air and it made a whole lot of sense because in air, you know, there's like, when I think of air, I think of clouds, I think of, you know, like weather, um, and rain is just part of clouds and whatnot, which is part of air. So cool. I've got a nice lavender color and we'll do this like this light blue almost. Maybe we'll do this more ultramarine blue. We'll do that. We'll get a little bit of a cooler tone going. And I think I want to really be aware of like where I'm laying this down. So I'm actually going to start from the lower end here and we're just going to spritz that maybe a third one because that's a little bit faint of a color. Um, you can even see like right here, it's super faint, but that's perfectly fine. And we're going to go ahead and take this one. And we're just going to go ahead and do some, something similar from a different angle. And then same thing, you don't have to use bubble wrap. You can use wax paper or even like, like plastic wrap or something, but I just like the effect of the bubble wrap and you can even like dab it across, like dab your excess around and create some different texture value there. All right. And you know, I want a little bit more purple. So I'm actually going to take that concept right here. I'm going to take that right there and I'm just going to go ahead and add it. Take my excess here because in mixed media, nothing gets wasted. I'm going to go ahead and just add some of that there until it's all used up. I think I got more of the stencil, but that's okay. All right. Here we go. And okay. It's super satisfying whenever you just get that shape of your, of, of no lines. There's no line working it yet. It's just there. And it's just your shape, your main shape. So we've got fire and air going on. So let's go back to our fire. And honestly, the acrylic paint now granted that it doesn't have a whole lot of, you know, paint to dry the thinner or the less, the less that you use, the faster it will dry. And because we spread it around, it dried out really fast actually. So let's go ahead. Um, again, with those stencils, I got to making a fire texture, but as, and I, I made it thinking I was just going to use this and I pulled it apart. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have two stencils. I have a negative space one and a, like, this is the negative space and this is the positive space. So let's go ahead and use the, let's use them alternating. So I'm going to go ahead and pull from my, my lovely range of crayons right here. Kind of using that same technique I showed you guys a week or so ago. Uh, you're going to take a makeup sponge. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start with the negative space here. And what you can also do is a way to kind of control where your lines are going. You can easily just take some of that scratch bristle board and put it in the areas you don't want it to overlap. Like ideally, if you had like, I don't know, um, like a masking tape or something, then that would be ideal. But we're just gonna go quickly here. You don't have to do all that fancy masking tape stuff. You can just literally do this. And we're just gonna take our crayon right here it also makes it really nice. It kind of like smooths out the nib if you've been like scraping across a canvas or something like that, which by the way, guys, these work on canvas. So consider that in your art making. It's so like super fun. Couldn't decide if I want to say so or super. All right. You're just going to pack on the pigment there and just pack it on real good. And then holding your stencil down, because it's going to want to try and move, you're going to go ahead and start to sponge it in. 
You're going to sponge it into that negative space there. And you, by the way, guys, you can make your own stencils out of anything. Um, I like to use a mixed media paper or a Bristol board. Um, James was actually talking about a oil, oil paper, I think, um, which would be really good in the sense that it wouldn't absorb your mediums at quite as much. So we're just gonna go ahead, we're just gonna do that until we frame the entire flame aspect going on. Oh, you're moving. Go ahead and pack that into the corners. And when you remove it, look at that. Look at that beautiful flame effect. I love it. Okay, so we're gonna do that another time, but let's let's go ahead and do the like the actual space. Now I don't wanna have the same pattern repeating, so you can always flip your stencil around. I think that's one of the things I love about stencils is that they are so versatile. And we could even change it up with a different color. So let's go ahead, we use this beautiful pomegranate color. By the way, guys, this is my favorite color of these crayons. This pomegranate is so friendly with other colors, it's amazing. So same thing, gonna kind of sanction off my edges there so I don't lose them and I don't overlap them because we're gonna we're gonna be filling out those edges later. And taking the other side here, we're gonna go, keep trying to shake it. It's like, you can't shake these. We're gonna take this nice, what color is this? This is cherry red. I love a good cherry red. We're gonna take that. Now I'm, I'm choosing darker colors because remember that we started lighter and we're moving darker. I'll move that just a little bit more. There we go. All right. And then holding it down, same thing. Kind of starting from your rim, you want to fade it out. You want to ombre it out to where the the edge ends. You want to you want to start at your base, which I would consider this to be the base. You want to start there and then ombre it because you want it to have a faded effect. Right. Now this pomegranate color is my favorite of the marabou crayons. They are amazing. All right, and you don't need a lot. You can just get a little bit because remember, oh, look at that, look at that texture. It's like it's kind of creating a value pull as it comes forward. All right, we're gonna do one more of that, one more round of that, and then we're gonna move on. Now these, when you lay them down, mind you, they do dry, like they, they will dry, they won't be, water soluble or really smudge after about 24 hours but while they are still fresh you can move them around and play with them however you want all right now we're going to go even lighter and we're going to come back to that negative space one negative yeah negative space one and we're going to flip that for the same effect or we're just gonna actually we're going to keep it in the same direction because i think it offsets it a little better and then same thing you know just Rinse, repeat, you know? All right, but it's the effect. And it's like, as long as you're enjoying the process, that's what really matters. Again, we're gonna take this beautiful orange this time and just pack it on there and just start at the base and move up. Kind of ombre that out nice and nice and steady. We're trying to get a good flame, flame effect in there. Here we go. And you don't need a whole lot. You just need a little. But see, we're already starting to create some, some textures there in our layering. All right. I think I need a break from that one for now. I need a break from looking at all these flames. It kind of looks like a spray paint effect. Like, look at that. It's kind of like a spray painted stencil. It's super fun. Okay. We're going to come over to our air. And we're going to do something similar. But this time, we're going to do it with clouds. Now, this part is one of my favorites. It's super satisfying. I'm actually going to start off with a darker color on purpose. And I think we're just gonna do, just stick with this one. We're gonna stick with this one negative space here. All right. Now I always like to do this with, because in my studio, I am very much of a, I alternate around between projects while I'm working. Um, so this, this little aspect of bouncing between two different pieces is not outside of the normal for me. Aha. And then same thing, we're just gonna flip it over, kind of create some more texture and, texture, and you can move it around. You don't have to keep it dead, like dead center in your piece. Okay. And then same thing, just kind of blending it out. You want to blend it out best you can. Get in the little tight corners there and just blend it out. 
Okay, and I'm just kind of rotating back and forth and back and forth. And you're creating this beautiful kind of depth to it. I love this. All right. And there we go. See, I kind of went overlapped a little bit over there, but you know what? That's okay. And you do want to be mindful of your stencils because sometimes they have that residue on the edges there that you're not aware about, just like me. That's okay. And just gonna go ahead and take off the remaining excess there. Really, really smudge it in. Cool, and look at that beautiful like layered. Gosh, it looks like I spent hours on that. I didn't at all, it was just two seconds. So definitely consider making yourself some negative space stencils here. Okay, so now moving into that, um, let's go ahead, let's return back to our fire over here. Now I've got these sketch markers and I think I'm gonna kind of stick with the warm tones here. I like to keep it kind of, kind of cohesive. And I think what we're gonna do, because we have like this nice faded look, now it's really nice to have for the background and stuff, but let's go ahead, let's make it, let's make a foreground aspect. Now, one of the things you can do with this, and now most people that have been following me for a while know this is one of my all time favorite techniques when using alcohol markers, is how to blend them. Now you can do it, primarily I love to do it with brush tips, but you can do it with a chisel nib too. So if you are new to this trick, stay tuned because you might discover a new aspect for your markers. And so this is great for alcohol markers, water-based markers, doesn't matter. What you do, you take the two chisel nibs right there and you just tap them. You want your darker color angled top. So this way the gravity works to your advantage. And you take your lighter color right there. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of lay that down and you're gonna ombre it out. And see, look at that beautiful kind of flame effect you get there. That ombre, love it. Now you, you're gonna wonder if this is going to hurt the tips. It, the, the tips, it's not. It's not gonna hurt it. Um, you just wanna make sure that before closing the cap that you scrub out all the remaining on an excess piece of paper. So I'm gonna keep this around for that purpose. All right. And let's go ahead and do something Let's start lighter and work darker. So I did that with the actual colors, but let's actually use a gray with that. So same concept, but this time with a gray tone. And this is, I chose this gray tone because it's a cool gray, but it's very, very light. So it almost works like a colorless blender. Highly recommend. And we're just gonna kind of lay it down and start to kind of create some flaming textures of our own. And then same thing, just kind of continue to pack it and ombre it and just work with it. And you can lay this, notice, notice that I'm going over the acrylic spray. Now it's, it looks a little bit yellowish, like greenish yellow, but sometimes it just needs to dry. And there we go. and just blending it. Now I've got a pretty good grasp and see here, I'm just gonna kind of scribble it, scribble out the color. You wanna make sure and get the sides real good because they can kind of stick in on the sides on either end until it's running clear. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do it with pink this time. Now this is a really nice pink, like this is a bit of a lighter pink compared to the Sugarholic uh, set which is another alcohol marker. It's the other alcohol marker set available in the art snack shop. And look at that. Like you just kind of swivel it, just swivel it, let it kind of do its thing. This is all about laying down texture and kind of capturing the elements, literally <laughs> the elements of the, I guess the jar, the elements in the jar. I love to do things like elements or scenery or scapes or something like that inside jars when I'm not sure what to do. And today I just did it on purpose because I just genuinely love the act of it. There we go. See, you're gonna kind of like overlap in your, you're kind of, you're going to kind of overlap in your jars right there and that's okay. Like don't, don't stress about it. Okay, and then same thing, just kind of scrubbing this guy clean. This is why no paper ever goes to waste in my studio. Okay, go ahead and cap that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add 
a little bit of texture, I think. I don't mind making the base a bit darker. I'm just kind of going at it. Now, even while it's dry or while it's laying down, you can still go in afterwards and blend it out. You want to do this while it's still wet as it will make a huge difference. And then while that's still going, we're going to go ahead and just add a little bit of red. It's not going to be too much different from the pink, not in, with how many layers we put, but that's okay. That dry brush effect is amazing. Okay. Now I want to add a little bit more detail to the top up here. So let's pull in our fine liners. Let's grab a couple of them. I'm not going to use the yellow because believe it or not, the yellow does not show up. So we got like your eyes automatically drawn to this area down here because it's so bright and it's so dark, which is great, but we want to try and spread the eyes look around. So we want to go ahead and kind of bring it forward. So let's go ahead and use this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start to pull out some details. Now this orange is kind of pale, but that's perfectly fine because it's, it's better to, again, to start lighter and then go darker. And I'm just kind of accenting certain curves of the flame. Not a lot, just a little bit. So let's move a little darker. Let's go to this like vermilion red. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead. We're just gonna start to fill in. We're gonna kind of follow the, the lead of these shadows and we're gonna just kind of pack in a little bit of color, just a little bit. And then while it's still drying or while it's still wet, we're gonna take that, we're just gonna lightly smudge it, or smudge it out, kind of fade it out. Kind of enhancing those negative spaces a little bit more. And if you get some of that watery um, watercolor effect, use it to your advantage. Just kind of go ahead and spread it and even use the excess and just kind of like add a little flame, flame, um, flame tongue, whatever it is, that little accent right there to make it look more like flames. And you can use the excess of what's what we've already laid down, which is what I love. Honestly, this whole mixed media series has been teaching me a lot about how to, how to use this stuff and not like worry that I've, I've overpacked or overwatered my paper, just go ahead and spread it around. It doesn't have to stay in that one spot. You can just go ahead and just, yeah. Ah, nice and blending. And it makes it a little, it makes it pop just a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and carry that color, the remaining color, and we're just going to kind of push it around until we feel satisfied with it. So you're going to go ahead There we go. And I don't want to use too much along the edge. I don't want to create a line work, but overlapping is definitely important. Like layers are huge. Like, look at that. I love that effect. Okay. Kind of going in some more, just, to, you don't even have to do it on all. Now, something I have been very guilty of for many years is actually going into and doing the same thing for every corner. Every shadow area, I add the same thing to every shadow area. What that ends up doing is it ends up making your piece feel a little flat. And I've been trying to really break out of that comfort zone. So don't, be, don't feel like you have to add this technique to every little corner of your piece. Just pick a couple and to start with, and then as you start to see what areas need more attention, like over here, it's kind of faded. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit more predominance right there. And just spread that out a little farther, maybe up and around to kind of accent and maybe following this, this shape that's already there. And look at it go. All right. So I would say I'm feeling pretty good about that right now. And here's what I mean. I have an even darker red here, but I don't necessarily need to continue to add it to each one. Maybe what I do, I add it just a little bit because it is darker. Just add a little bit more right there because it the darker it is, the more powerful it's going to be and the more likely it is to draw your eye away. And this is kind of like a 
Bordeaux burgundy-ish kind of color. Okay, let's go ahead and add just a little bit right there into that negative space. Okay, I'm kind of carrying that down. All right, I think we've done enough of spreading with the fine liners right there. Let's add a little bit of hand detailing. We're gonna take go back to that vermilion color because at this point, the vermilion color, I didn't wanna just jump into the top here because it's so much more faded. So let's go ahead down here. Let's kind of make some sense out of these streaks, out of these little like tongue flames right there. Let's go ahead and make some, some uh, flame shapes. And they don't even have to be following a particular pattern. They just have to look like flames kind of accenting. Now, if you're making your own stencils, then whenever you go into hand apply, it's already gonna have a similarity to your own style. So these are not identical, but it's gonna like, it's gonna <laughs> resemble my own style there, which is more than you can get from any stencils that you purchase. And then kind of coming up. There we go. Wonderful, loving this. Now, let me go ahead. I want, I want a little bit of a bolder color there, but the alcohol marker, it doesn't, it's not gonna move. So we're gonna have to go ahead and figure out another way. So let's go back to our crayons right here. Actually, you know what? Let's just use some of the actual spray. And we're not gonna spray it. We're actually just gonna take this. And we're just gonna just dab a little bit here, just with the stem of these sprays. Guys, these sprays are amazing because there is pigment inside the stem right there. There we go. All right, and just kind of adding it in because I don't want to take away from the, from the yellow. I don't want to distract from the yellow but I need a little bit more value to show that, this, that the flames are a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna blend that around just a little bit. And I didn't, I didn't put it on every little flame tip because whatever's excess, you're just gonna go ahead and put into those little tinier areas. This way nothing gets wasted. Okay. And then you can add some little streaks right there and right there. All right. And then I like to accent above and below. So kind of taking that same concept, kind of coming up top and maybe just adding a few of the like more fierce streaks of paint or even texture. You could even just like fan them out into texture. Oh, I like that. I don't even know if I'm going to spread these out with water. I think I just kind of like the, like it the way it is. And you can just really like, I'm just playing here. I'm just kind of like letting it go and kind of just working with wherever it goes. And I'm not using a brush because with a brush, I have way too much control. I know how to work a brush. I'm just using <laughs> the stem of a spray bottle here. And then kind of bringing that down. You could always take a paper towel and see what kind of textures you can blot up with, um, with that technique. And see, it's already starting to dry and it's giving me this amazing kind of texture. Let's add a little bit right here. I don't wanna to add too much. The key is to not overdo it. Just start off small. Don't be afraid to overdo it, but don't don't overdo it right away. Just kind of let it, let it guide you. All right, now while that's drying, we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna come back to air we're gonna, we've looked at a lot of orange. Let's look at some, some blues and purples now. And I think what I want to do, I want to really emphasize those clouds right there. So I'm going to take like a nice, we're going to start off lighter. We're going to start off with this lighter blue. They look very similar. But we're going we're gonna to go ahead and I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add just some light cloudy textures here and there. Maybe we'll add some birds at some point. I don't really want to distract from the natural kind of effect that we've given it already. And let's see what happens when we spread it out with a little bit of water. Just kind of 
let it have its, just let it roll. All right. And if you want lighter colored line work, then don't, don't overdo it like with sketching, just do one stroke at a time because it will automatically help things be lighter. I've been really high on colored line work lately. Like really, really high on it. It's been, it's, it's been kind of amazing. It's something I'm not used to doing. Now, while that's great, I, I want to match that. So we're gonna come back over it once the water has dried. And this is just adding little techniques here and there. So, and then see how we're getting more of a, of a line work here. I'm kind of spreading that out. And you can always take the excess and just dab it over in the other corners of your same painting. Can I do one more over here? I think that area is still drying. go there we go amazing all right that's coming along pretty good I'm liking the whole cloud texture now I want to add a little bit more but we're going to deviate away from purple and blue for a minute we're going to add a little bit of pink because we need to offset it somehow but I don't want to lose the light airy feeling of it ha airy feeling of it <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to maybe add some we're just going to add a little bit of texture I don't even think I'm going to add like a, like a focal point here. I'm just going to add a little bit of texture because it's a mixed media piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lightly smudge that around. And at this point, this is probably a point when I'd be like, oh man, I just ruined the whole thing. Oh, well, we're going to find a way to work it to our advantage. Totally one of those situations where I'd feel like, what have I done? But that's okay. Because that's how we learn. So by taking that, we're just going to go ahead and kind of, again, continue to smudge it out a little bit. Now, at this point is where I do want to bring out more of the undertones of that cloud that we worked so hard to get. So we're just going to take my crayon, but instead of applying it directly, I'm going to go ahead and just wet the tip of it right there. And we're just going to go ahead and apply it and just kind of bring out those shapes that we had laid down. If you want more concentrated pigment, then use less water and just kind of like let it kind of pull itself forward again and see, we're already starting to save it. And so what we've done, we've kind of created a bit of a texture right there, a little bit of a shadow difference, a little bit of a value and a little bit of a, like an actual texture I'm kind of just saving it for the areas that have the most activity over it. I think we're gonna add a little bit more to our flames. And then, you know what, let's go ahead and just add a little bit over here. Ooh, I like that, I like that. I think we'll head back to our flames here in just a minute. Needs a little bit of a darker touch there. It kind of looks like that rain that you see from far in the distance whenever you're looking at clouds. Love it. All right, we have one more thing I want to touch up on the flames, and then we might actually have time for another element. What? Okay, um, I'm actually going to directly apply this time. We're going to take this crayon, and we're going to kind of create... We're going to fill in some of that negative space there. Layering on top of the alcohol marker because the alcohol marker is permanent. We're just gonna fill in those areas. All 
All right. And then we're now here, we're just going to directly add some water, fill in those negative spaces. And I'm not reaching for a whole lot of water here. I just kind of want to let it shine. I want to let it be as pigmented as possible. So I'm just kind of letting my damp brush do the work. Okay. And there we go. Brings those flames a little bit more forward. Okay, now that that is done, I'm actually going to reach for the blue marker. And what we're going to do, should I do blue or should I do gray? Now here's why scratch paper is so great. You can literally take it and you can demonstrate and figure out which one you wanna do. I feel like that's a little too faint. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do the blue. It's gonna get very primary all of a sudden. We're gonna just like follow the curves with this out of the shape using a fine tip. And we're literally just gonna outline our element. Now, if you want straighter or more, more fluid line work done, use your whole arm, don't use your wrist. Use your whole arm, wrist, like there's too, like your, the wrist doesn't rotate in a perfect circle or in a perfect curve. So, well, I guess you can do. You can do a wrist for like lighter ones like this. Like we're just gonna go swoop right there. And you're gonna have a little bit of a tail um, right there and you just blend it into a thicker, into a thicker line. And then you have line values. Okay, kind of same thing. using the whole shoulder. And now if you, if you, now here's a fun tip. If you have a really hard time creating a firm, like a straight line, um, X when it breathe in and then exhale out and then go to, to go to do your line. Don't breathe in and hold your breath, exhale out, hold it while then do your line and you will get a steadier line. Cause we so often try to hold our breath. And that's actually the last thing that we need to be doing. Now from here, you can actually take your line, your fine liners here. Yes, wrists rotate for smaller curves, larger curves, move hand arm clockwise. There you go. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a little bit of values. I'm using a very light blue here, not using a whole lot. And we're just going to create a little bit of value range using a little bit of cross hatching, which is one of my favorite things I'd like to do when doing detailed line work. And we're just going to do a little bit of stippling here because it's a cork. So why not? And I'm leaving everything else monochromatic because I want this, this flame to kind of be the bigger focus there. We're gonna kind of same thing with the curve of the bottle right there, maybe a little bit right there. And don't overthink your hatch work too much. Now for an emphasis there, I think I'm actually going to outline a little bit in red, this actual piece, because what I'm noticing is that the eye is drawn directly here to the bottle shape. So let's go ahead and add a contrast, a complementary, complementary. Uh, let's go ahead and add an outline here just to bolden it out just a little bit. And that's just because these markers are very vibrant. So don't be afraid. I feel like Marabou is, is a game. Like the products are, are kind of just like playing a game. It's like, okay, I see you this, this level. I'm going to raise you this, this brightness level. And you kind of have to keep up. And that's, I think, one of the reasons that's been pushing my art so much. I love Marabou for this. Speaking of, you guys, go give them a follow at Marabou Creative USA. I kid you not, you will find so much inspiration. They are so awesome. And then that line actually doesn't take away like I thought it was going to because it just blends right into the bottom right there. And I love it. Magic fire. I love it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more 
just in these corners right here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and just soften some of the edges here, also spreading out the color a little bit, kind of creating a little bit of more value. It doesn't have to go far. Now these do not go as far as regular like watercolors or even the aqua pens, but I think that's because they are a fine liner. So they're not going, they're not designed to pump out a lot of juicy pigment and ink like the aqua pens are. These ones are a little bit more about detail. They're a little bit more detail oriented. All right, so we have a flame bottle right there. Let's come back to our air, our little air bubble over here. And let's see if this will come up with a little bit of water. Ah, and look at that. Ah, well, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing about water soluble stuff. There are so many hidden undo buttons. It's one of my favorite things why I love water media so much. Okay. All right, let's see. So we want to kind of create the same element, but I'm almost thinking about doing a pink, pink bottle. Should I stick with blue? Pink. I think I'm going to do pink because I have a little bit of a pink right there, but it's not a whole lot. So let's accent it just a little bit. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to start from this outside. We're just going to go ahead and just kind of drag it down. And then following that same curve, And then kind of creating the, the mouth of the bottle right there. And if you really wanted, you could do the entire element series. Like we might have time for one more. Okay. And now that that's there, I'm actually going to go to the blue right here. Kind of create... An outline for the blue. This blue is very eye catching. I think it's because it is so deep in color. And I love it. Okay, now for me, I actually want to add a little bit more to this. I want to make I want to make the outside a little bit more vibrant, I guess. So we're gonna take some of this. And we're just going to kind of follow that line right there. And we're just going to kind of add in. Oh dear, I hear sirens. Oh no. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and add in that color right there. Just kind of along, along the out, outlines. Making the white the whitest part, the lightest part. Okay, now I want to take a little bit of that blue that we have, not a lot because it's a pretty powerful blue. I'm just going to go ahead and add it in to these areas. And you know what I think I'm even going to do? I think I'm even going to take some white here. And we're just going to kind of blend it. It kind of creates a bit of a pastel look. But that's not all. We're going to smooth it out a little bit. I think we're even going to spread it out with a little bit of water. I'm trying to keep it away from that that inner side right there. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of watercolor that all the way up, all the way around. Now, if you really wanted to, one of the things that you could also do is you can go ahead and add some of this acrylic and you can use that to make the watercolor um, or to, to activate the pastel and spread it out with some water. Thanks you guys. A 
This is what I love about water soluble things is that you don't have to just do water with it. You can activate it with paint or watercolor. It doesn't just have to be water. I think that's one of the reasons why I love water media so much. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. There we go. Sorry, my comments got stuck on the screen. And I'm going to take a little bit of that paint right there. Now you do want to be mindful of these bottles. If you have the caps un like unscrewed right there, you don't want them to tip over on your desk. <laughs> and you're just going to spread it around. And it already is bringing a lot more focus to the center right here. The, the pastels can last up to 24 hours before they are solid, they so before they're solid and they can't be spread around anymore. Okay, let me see. I still want the clouds to be a little bit more dominant, so I'm actually gonna be a little bit brave and we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and just apply some of that dark color right there. All right. Because I wanna push the value of it a little bit more. Like push your darks darker and your lights lighter. And I want, I, I love where this is going, but it just wasn't really standing out from the bottle in the background. So you, that, may, that just means you got to push your darks a bit darker. There we go. Oh, I already have some down there. Now, these are actually something I've been using for a long time. These crayons, and I absolutely love them. They're almost like travel watercolors in a way, but like mess-free. Well, mess-free in the way that they don't, they're not going to tip over. It's not like a paint jar or anything like that. So one of these and a water brush pen, perfect. Okay. Adding a little bit more there. Ah, see, I'm already liking this so much more. And we're getting a nice crayon texture. Like, honestly, use the crayon texture to your advantage. Like, change it up. Instead of it being super solid and whatnot, let it give its own natural texture to what you're working on. Embrace the crayon texture. <laughs> I think as somebody that's like super into very crisp line work and whatnot, this has been a huge help in that area. Now I'm actually going to just offset that there and go instead of in the negative, go into the positive space. And there we go. Now I think for this bottle right here, I'm actually gonna pull that um, that gray, that gray marker. I think I'm gonna add some values with it. Using the chisel nib here, and the chisel nib here, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of start to add some nice gray value texture. Okay, just on the base of the bottle, the neck right there. Neck, the neck of the bottle, there we go. And a little bit down below. All right. And then kind of in the same direction, gonna kind of take a bit of a, a gray and kind of recreate some of those hatch marks with the fine liners. And just kind of like 
Really owning it there. Kind of some of that stippling effect on the cork. There we go. I love the concept of making different shaped jars, like jars that are not your typical mason jar shape, but that are a little bit out of the ordinary. I'm going to see what I can do with this white crayon here. There we go. And this white crayon, while it adds a beautiful blending technique, it's also really great in just adding a little bit of white to it and lightening up some of those areas. Like, don't be afraid to use white. Like, look at that, it's already pulling it forward more. And you can go ahead and smudge it around. Make sure it gets evenly around your piece, but it's already starting to pull those clouds more forward. And this is again why you work lighter to darker, because this would not show up on something that was lighter. Here we go. Just kind of smudging that around there. All right. I'm actually liking that. I'm liking where that's going. Very cool. Okay. So with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sign these pieces. Oh, I might add a little bit more over here actually. In fact, Let's see what this does. We're just gonna we're just gonna play with this for a minute. I'm gonna make sure there's no other colors on there. We're just gonna kind of see what happens when we add a little bit of white. Just to kind of offset some of that solid color there. Create a little bit more value. And you can again smudge it around. Kind of get a good good feel for it. Kind of making some of those areas lighter. All right. With that, don't forget to sign your work always. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna try and match the bottle. And sign one. Ah, the first time I ever mess up the year of the new year. Went to go right 2020, it's 2021. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and use that same color. There we go. All right, and there are two, at least, of the multiple elements. I think there's like four or five elements or something like that. So we have two of them here, not bad. Remember that you can do a lot with these crayons, or sorry, these crayons and some negative space textures going on. You can create a lot of it. Um, the overlapping, don't forget that by using these sprays or something of the like, you can lay down the base of your, of your background that you can work within and create a shape. And it looks wonderful. Um, adds a very different style too. And I love the fact that these are permanent when dry. So these ones are permanent when dry and it's fabulous. Absolutely love it. So be thinking about some of the ways that you can kind of push the barriers of your art supplies and how you can mix and match them together. So I want to say again, thank you to our, a huge thank you to our sponsors at Marabou for sponsoring this live stream and supporting Art Snacks. Thank you guys so much for being here and for all of your support um, and for creating with me along the way. I hope that this has inspired you to try some new techniques in your own pieces and whatnot. Um, we'll have another one here, another Mixed Media Monday here next Monday. So I'll be with you guys then. Tune in for another Mixed Media Masterpiece. Also, just as a reminder that everything I've used here is in, is currently available in the Art Snack Shop and you can shop the stream using the um, 
the link below, or you can shop this if you're catching the replay. All these items are available in the shop. Be sure to get what, whatever um, alcohol markers, fine liners. See, they have all the colors of the crayons and the sprays. Just have fun. Um, and if you need a recommendation, personal favorite is the pomegranate um, mixed media crayon. Love this. As well as the, what is it? Aquamarine mixed media spray. Personal favorites of mine. Just, just throwing that out there. Have a lovely night, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.